Welcome to the Rideshare Dojo. If you're an Uber or Lyft driver or anyone in the gig economy, this is the place for you. With tips and techniques, interviews with passengers and industry leaders, entertainment, inspiration, motivation. Here, with over 23,000 rides, is your host, Jay Crater. Let's enter the dojo. Hey, everybody. Uber drivers, Lyft drivers, Instacart drivers, Postmates, Ease, Zoom drivers, DoorDash, Via, Amazon Prime, Amazon Prime Now, Uber Eats, Grubhub, all you drivers and passengers and all of us who are part of this big, beautiful gig economy, welcome. It is so great to have you here for today's exciting episode. My name is Jay Crater. Let's enter the dojo. Hey everybody, just want to jump here and say uh, we got a great guest. His name is Syed Jelani. He is the CEO of Safer, S-A-F-R, which is a rideshare company uh, dedicated to women. So it's mostly women passengers and it's mostly women drivers. So I got a lot of questions about his uh, program, where it is, how the drivers get paid, and uh, you know what the global initiative is. And all of that. Uh, so uh, buckle your seatbelts. We're going to have a great chat. Uh, I bring you now uh, Syed Jelani. All right, everybody. Welcome to the dojo. It's great to have you in the house. And we have a very special guest today. I'm actually really looking forward to speaking with him. His name is Syed Jelani. And he is the CEO and president of of a rideshare startup called Safer, S-A-F-R. And I'll just say at the beginning, his website is a go safer, G-O-S-A-F-R dot com. And it's a, a uh, it's fascinating. So we're, I'm just going to start, uh, say uh, welcome. So welcome, Syed. It's good to have you on the call. Thank you, Jay. Thank you. Yeah. Uh, and I hope you and your audience and your subscribers are staying home and staying safe and healthy. Yeah. Thank you for the invitation. Yeah, 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 yeah. Great. Welcome to the dojo. Yeah. Well, our industry has been hit really hard, as you know. Uh, so uh, the demand for rideshare driving has just dropped to, you know, hardly anything. And uh, those those people who are driving are risking their their health, you know. Um, but let me just say this about you, Syed. You're a seasoned business leader with 25 years of experience building companies. Um, you lead Safer's global growth, investment, and overall vision to build a better and safer and more empowering future for women around the world. So, um, yeah, so hats off to you. I think this is just so fantastic. I've got two daughters, and uh, I think it's great. So can you um, tell us about uh, how does Safer work? Is it it's it's women drivers only? Women drivers and they only drive women. Is that do I have that right? So so that's a great question. So uh, of course under the equal opportunity law we cannot discriminate based on gender. So we have the platform is open for all genders. Mm. Uh, we want to make sure that LGBTQ women men are all represented. Mm. But let me go back step back a little bit and I can I can explain to you the problem in the market in the right share market. Mm -hmm. uh, so. The idea came about when we saw the rideshare market and we saw it's overwhelmingly owned by men, mm. uh, where 86 percent of the drivers with the two largest rideshare companies were men. And those women who would drive for other rideshare companies would only drive during daylight hours and after sunset, they won't be able to drive. So not only that reduced their potential, not only they were unequally represented in the market, but also their potential was reduced by 50% because they couldn't drive at night. So having said that, when we started Safer, we understood that, okay, we need to make sure that majority of our drivers and the riders are women, and we are serving that population, and we can bring LGBTQ and other communities and provide them a safe alternative. So mm -hmm. when, whenever we talk about Safer, we talk about as an option that for people who who want to go with other rideshare companies, there are options out there. But those women who don't want to drive for them and don't want to take rides with them, then there is no option for them. Mm. So that's where the safer comes. So almost 95% of our drivers are women, mm -hmm. to answer your question. So majority of our drivers are women, although we are open to all genders. 
a, a big part of LGBTQ community also supports us. And we are getting so many requests from across the country that uh, it's getting overwhelming uh, for us to respond as fast as we would like to. But overall, the platform caters towards women, the p platform caters towards children, and elderly market along with the LGBTQ. These are the things that we are very focused on the safety side and the empowerment side. So, can, so, so, if a, a man can a man uh, be be a, dr a passenger? Um, yes. Using yes. safer. Okay. Yes. So, but, man can be a passenger and a driver as well. Mm -hmm. But we have a feature called gender preference feature. Mm -hmm. So, if our driver, who is a woman, says that I want to only pick up a woman rider, mm -hmm. then she will only get a request from women riders. Okay. And vice versa. All right. So I, I'm assuming if you're a man as a, a man driver, you're probably not going to get a lot of business. <laughs> is that is that uh, accurate? I mean, it, it can be the case in some instances, mm -hmm. but on on the, the platform overall, we kept it as unbiased as we can, while making sure that we focus on our mission of women and families empowerment mm -hmm. through safety. Got it. Got it. So. Um, I spent a week, I think it was in December of 2018, driving a taxi because I wanted to experience that uh, as well as being a, a rideshare driver. And um, a lot of the women I picked up, um, they said that they preferred taxis because they felt safer in a taxi because the taxi drivers have to go through a more rigorous vetting process uh, to, become a, to become a driver. And I found that interesting. Um, that that's the case. And I, I, I would think if safer was in my community, uh, women would feel much, much safer uh, using your platform than even a taxi. Uh, yes, I mean, your, your, your hypothesis is, is, is right on. Uh, majority of our drivers, let's say, let's talk about the, the supply side. Majority of our drivers are the first time drivers. So mm. drivers from other right share companies and trying to recycle them. We are, pro we are giving new opportunities to women who never drove for other rideshare companies and would never want to drive for them uh, to be able to drive and earn money specifically now when the times are hard and mm -hmm. we're getting even more and more requests. On the rider side, uh, you're absolutely right. If there's a woman, she would prefer any time of the day a woman driver because by the virtue of statistic, uh, less assaults and sexual assault happen by women against women. Uh, or any other gender for that matter. Mm -hmm. So that's where we feel like we created an environment which starts with safety, adds on empowerment, and creates a sisterhood, mm -hmm. a community, a sense of community that allows both riders and drivers to grow with each other. Mm -hmm. Great. Okay. So does it work um, like an Uber and a Lyft? So there's an app and, and you, you request a ride the same way um, or... Is it more like a taxi? Uh, how, how is it structured? How, how do people, I understand how people become drivers, um, but I am curious if there's more of a vetting process than, than there is with Uber and Lyft. And, and my second part of that question is then, how, how does somebody request uh, a ride and, 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 yeah, and, and get a, a woman to come pick, pick them up? So the great questions, number one. Uh, our vetting process is much more in depth, much more detailed. Our name is safer. We talk about safety. So we cannot cut corners in any shape and form. Mm -hmm. So we have created a, a program called um, Captain's Program. So mm -hmm. we have regional zip code based representatives, women who want to help us grow in that community. We They meet with every single driver that completes the application with us. Mm -hmm. We, at least at now in this condition, like in coronavirus kind of a situation, we, we speak with every single driver we sometimes Skype or video call mm -hmm. or have multiple conversations with the drivers to better understand why they want to join us, what are they, what are they dealing with, and how can we help. Uh, in addition, we do, of course, the background checks, much more in-depth background checks than our competitors. Mm -hmm. And we make sure that we remain in touch with our drivers throughout. So we don't want to do one-time betting and then let them be out on the road. Mm -hmm. We want to make sure that we remain in touch with our drivers on weekly and monthly basis so we can understand their problems, we can understand the challenges, we can create a brand and create a platform that belongs to the drivers and the riders. So I hope that answers your question that is yeah. a long vetting process. Yeah. Now, number two, in writing the, in, in the request side of it, 
it works pretty much like Uber and Lyft, mm-hmm. but we have few features, safety features that they don't have. Uh, number one, of course, the gender preference, which allows a woman driver to pick up women riders and vice versa. Mm-hmm. Uh, the second one is color match. So there are a lot of incidences out there that a female rider got into a uh, uh, female rider got into uh, a, a different car and they were not supposed to be in there and mm-hmm. that caused unfortunate accidents or incidents. Mm-hmm. So we have created a color matching feature that allows the rider to actually know who is this his or her driver and vice versa. And that creates another sense of security and safety. Then we have in-app safety features like emergency contact, sharing of your, you know, your ride and so on and so forth. And we're working on some back behind the scene features that allows us to monitor rides and make sure that we can proactively respond to any threat possible. Mm-hmm. Got it. So in that way, we are much, much better than, than the other guys. Yeah. Yeah. All right. Sounds great. Sounds fantastic. Um, um, and then how, how do, um, how do you pay your, your, uh, drivers? Cause that's, that's always been an, a huge issue with Uber and Lyft is, you know, we used to get paid at a percentage of, of what the, uh, drive, what the passenger paid. And then about two years ago, that changed to, uh, you know, uh, my, miles and minutes, uh, which uh, reduced reduced how much we were getting paid, and then those those have been tweaked. Also, um, what uh, what model do you use to pay to pay your drivers? So we pay uh, number one hundred percent of the tips are paid to the drivers. Mm-hmm. We don't take any part of the tip, and sure. almost eighty percent of a rider's tip uh, on the on the fair side. Well, of that's that 80%, that's 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 tremendous. Um, that's tremendous. That's yes. tremendous because yeah. most women would tip another fellow woman driver. Because they would understand their story, support would, support the sisterhood, they would support each other. Yeah, yeah, yeah. exactly, mm-hmm. exactly. And and on the on the fair side of it, we make sure that our women uh, drivers make eighty percent of the fare. So we only keep a twenty percent of it. Uh-huh. Uh, the eighty percent goes towards the women. We also make sure that uh, if there are bonuses and other programs that we come up with, uh, majority of the women take advantage. But here's the most important thing. Um, we are a little bit expensive than Uber X and Lyft lowest level service. So we're a little bit more expensive. So, and with the tips and with more, a little bit more fares, uh, our women drivers end up in making more per hour than driving for other ride share company uh, uh, for an hour. And then finding out that they got ducted 30% and in some cases, 35% of the fare. Right. So, uh, so we make sure that we more and more money goes, goes towards the women. And some of the money that comes to us, uh, actually all the money that comes to us, goes back into the business development and bu- building the brand. Right, right. Um, so I've, I, I had not heard about you until I was contacted about this uh, this podcast. Um, so I, I assume you're not in the San Francisco Bay Area yet because I've not heard of you here. Um, where where are you right now? So right now we're operating in Orlando, Florida. Okay. Uh, we we are growing very fast, and San Francisco is going to be our next location. Oh, wow. We've been eyeing very closely on that. Uh-huh. Uh, we have uh, we have a lot more drivers registered from California area than we we thought we would. Uh, we believe that this is a great San Francisco could be a really really good market. So we are planning ourselves that you know hopefully you know touch what this these crisis go over very fast. Mm-hmm. Uh, that we want to be in San Francisco area. Uh, because San Francisco and the greater California area has more working women who work in tech field, who work in multiple other fields, working early in the morning and late nights and so on and so forth. And this platform would help serve that community very well. Absolutely. I mean, that's why Uber and Lyft started in San Francisco. It's just uh, custom made for for a ride share. Yeah, I think you'd be a big exactly. hit. Exactly. Yeah, you'd be a big hit here in um here in San Francisco, for sure. Um, and yeah, I love that city anyway. So I love that city. Uh, every time I'm there, you know, it's it's a beautiful, beautiful city. Uh, and of course, I mean, who 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 cannot like California? You know, I mean, California is a. I mean, right now we are northeast. It's still cold. And yes. I'm sure you guys have a beautiful, beautiful <laughs> weather over there. Yeah, it's, it's so a, so definitely we look forward. Yeah, it's nice. Um, Cool. So on your website, I, I, I found some interesting things that probably a lot of uh, my audience might not know of. Um, so it said, um, women make up less than 25% of drivers in the ride sharing space. 
and make an average of 30% less than men. Women routinely suffer harassment, both as drivers and riders. Female riders also get taken on 5% longer rides by unscrupulous drivers. This is unacceptable, and that's why we started um, Safer. So yeah. these are some interesting statistics. So women make up less than 25% of drivers in the space. So you, you brought that up before. Uh, more men, men feel more comfortable doing this. So uh, men are more likely to do it. Um, uh, 30, but they make 35% less than men. <clears throat> now, so I, I'll give you another statistic on top of it. Yeah. We all know that women make less than men in, in any job, right? I mean, they make 34% less than men uh, than any, in any job in the U.S. or anywhere in the world for that matter. But there's the World Bank statistic that women spend 38% more than men on their transportation. Uh -huh. Huh. So now, if you take one gender of the society, which is the majority of the global world's population, right. you pay them less than the other gender, you charge them more than the other gender, then the next statistic comes that only, I mean, I think one or two percent, uh, sorry, 90, 50, uh, 98 percent of the world's women population actually owns less than 2% of the global wealth. Mm, mm -hmm. so, so, of course, that will lead to that statistic because you're giving them less opportunities. Mm -hmm. And, and you're, more. You are, you're reducing the, their potential with the security threat or whatever the threat that you can pose. And then you are charging them more for everything. So guess what? They won't have money that they can invest and, and, and follow the path of wealth accumulation. So that's what we want to change. This is what... Safer is not just simply a ride share side of it. It's about a platform that can create a change for 56% of the world's population mm. that over centuries or thousands of years have been kept and confined within the cultural and societal norms that are ridiculous. Yes, yes. So we're trying to make sure that we can liberate and we can be part of that part of the movement. And, and it's not the fight for one gender for themselves. It's the fight of all the genders to come together to help the majority of the world's population to to gain what they 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 were supposed to have from day one. Right, just a just a fair share, just like yeah, equality. Basically, we're talking yeah, you know, equality. We, we like that, that's we, about it. Equality. Right. So. We, we we want equality. Right. Yeah. Uh, yeah. All right. I, well, I think that's great. I think it's it's. I can imagine it's very exciting for you to be heading up a company with uh, such big aspirations and to be a part of a, of a, of a problem that, that impacts all of us, but particularly 56% of the world. So I, so good for you. I think that's a, I appreciate it's a fantastic thing I mean, to, be, to be a part of. A day, yeah. I mean, we all have women in our lives, mothers, sisters, daughters, and we tell the women in our lives that the world is equal for you. Uh, which is not true, which is really not true. If there are women listening to this podcast, sure. I'm sure they would agree to that. Mm -hmm. So either we continue living that life for the next remaining physical life of our lives, a time period of our lives, or we try changing that. If we don't change that, then the, the, the can is going to be kicked down the lane to 2040, 2050, some next generation comes on board and they try to take on the baton, or yeah. we try to change it. So people like Jay or people like others will say, you know what? This has been enough. Something needs to change. So now your life has a mission. Yeah. Your life has something bigger mission than yourself and then simply to make money and so on and so forth. Mm -hmm. And once they have a mission, then others will join on that mission to make sure that we can achieve the goals. And that if that goal allows women in the U.S. or women in Western or Southern America or Africa to gain more wealth and have financial and economic independence, then that would dramatically change the lives of the families and the lives of the people around them. Absolutely. Yeah, no, I think that's just bravo, fantastic. Um, <clears throat> one of the notes that I got uh, that you you uh, could speak up, speak to is the uh, rampant sexual assault problem that's uh, in the rideshare industry, but is not really uh, talked about that much. I, I, I can tell you I... I got into a car at the at the Sacramento airport, and the woman, you know, I always tell them who I am, and some of them know who I am from all my articles. And anyway, they just start telling me stories, and 
uh, this woman told me a story about picking up somebody late at night and, and getting assaulted and she had to hit him in the face and kick him out of the car and, and she was trembling and, you know, it's just a horrible, horrible story. And I think that mm-hmm. kind of that kind of thing happens way, way more than uh, than does get reported because people don't want to lose their job or, or, or just cause mm-hmm. cause a problem. Um, yeah, mm-hmm. w- yeah. W- can you uh, illuminate us on, on how bad the problem is? So this is a great question, honestly, and this is very, very unfortunate we, that we are even even talking about that that kind of a problem in the 21st century. Uh, Unfortunately, I know some numbers have been reported, but the real numbers are far, far, far more than that, like you just mentioned. Majority of the writers don't report because if they report, then then their family members or their colleagues won't allow them to go go out at late at night, especially college students and so on and so forth. Uh, majority of the drivers don't report because like the reason that you just mentioned, that they won't be able to to earn for their life, uh, mm-hmm. for, for their family and, and for the livelihood. In Asia, the problem goes even further. Mm. I think you and women did a survey recently in India and Pakistan or somewhere there. Uh, I may be wrong somewhere, but nine or eight out of 10 women were harassed or sexually assaulted or somehow threatened by the right share driver. Mm-hmm. That's, that's staggering. That's, that's horrible. That's unacceptable. And that's why when you look at these numbers, these stories are one way too many. And once you rattle, like you just mentioned to somebody, the driver's story, that wants to simply affect or impact on that brain or that personality, those impact can translate into human behavior, psychological issues, and mm-hmm. many other behavioral issues across their families. Mm-hmm. And we don't realize that, and, and we just take it as a number and as a, as a statistic, However, that's a, there is a story behind those numbers, each and every number, and there is a there is a society behind those numbers that get impacted. Mm-hmm. So we at Safer, we are trying to make sure that we can create a safe environment and we can create a empowering environment. Mm-hmm. So women who's working late at night and women who wants to work early in the morning or women who wants to bring bread to her table, they don't have to think twice. Right. They have an option out there. Yeah. And that's what we are focusing on. Yeah. I think um well I know. It's it's very um it's difficult for men to fully grasp um what it what it is to, to be a woman in, in Western society or or Eastern society for what it is to be yeah. a, a woman on this planet. Um you know, women are I was I was speaking to somebody uh, today, and they have an app uh, uh, to help to help people feel safer and to report violence in an area. And uh, she was giving me some st- statistics about how how much more women uh, fear fear for their lives, and and you know just just like uh, women walking with uh, their keys, you know, laced through their fingers, you know, so they have that like a weapon. It's something that men mm-hmm. don't even think about. You know, we most men just walk around and, and we're not concerned about our, you know, our well-being. We just take it for granted that you know we can handle ourselves. But women don't. You know, they're they're they they have to be afraid so much more of the time. And like my friend who got it, who had that attack, you know, driving late at night, that just sticks with you. You know, that's that's a serious kind of energetic um, injury. You know, and it doesn't just shake off. You don't just tell it like a story. You know, it, 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 you carry it with you, and 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 you're you're even more in fear because that is something that had happened. So, and and you're I'm just I'm just right. I'm just yeah. a guy talking. So what the hell do I know? But, um, in I, I will say though that in talking to my passengers, uh, the women who you know wanted to have a conversation, the majority I don't I don't have a statistic for it, but the majority of them told me that they have been hit on. Uh, by drivers, um, uh, which surprises me, but it's that's that is that's you know something happens when guys are behind the wheel and a woman gets in their car, and it's it's not right, uh, but the, it 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 demonstrates the need, the huge need for a company like yours. 
I, 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 I appreciate your comments, honestly, because uh, these, these statistics, these numbers, these stories, the, we get these numbers every single day, Jay, through mm. our Facebook, through our emails. Women are telling our stories after stories after stories. Honestly, once you start reading that, I don't think that any sane mind will, will not work very hard to make sure that and another alternative and option is there to provide better ride experience, better driving experience and earning experience. Now, when we talk about the current situation, when a lot of people are losing their jobs, when a lot of people are like bartenders and you know, sir, a lot of women are losing the job. Majority of the people who are losing the job are women, mm. frankly, at this time. So at a company like us, I, I feel like we come right in, in, in the midst of it where once this is over, we can provide a job opportunity to those women who want to earn some living uh, without getting hit on, harassed, mm -hmm. and assaulted. Right. And that's what we are very, very focused on. Yeah, no, it's, it's really great. So if, if somebody's interested in um, driving for you, um, would they just go to um, gosafer.com? Yeah, the they best? go on gosafer.com. They can go on App Store. They can go on iOS, uh, sorry, Android, uh, Google Play Store, and they can download Drive Safer app. Mm. And Drive Safer app is our driver app. The okay. onboarding mm -hmm. process is pretty much the same as other ride share companies. Mm -hmm. But behind the scenes, then they get a call from us. Uh, we, we talk to them. I mean, I personally talk to many of them. Our other top tier team members, like uh, Tiberius Vidan or Sal or Kelly or Olivia mm. or Rambla somebody would call somebody to make sure that we are in touch with our drivers and then our captains get in touch and then we meet with them if we can right now we can't mm -hmm. but uh, you know when things were normal we, we that that was part of our protocol and then we stay in touch then we make sure that we bring them in to the sisterhood mm -hmm. and we do right by them got it that uh, sounds great all right awesome all right let's uh let's kind of wrap this up i i always ask uh uh, so I had three questions of uh, my first-time okay. guests. Um, so the first question is, um, what is your favorite movie of all time? If you were to have to watch <laughs> one one movie for the rest of your life, what would that movie be? The rest of my life. Okay. That's a, that's a very difficult question, I would say. I mean, I would say I'm a big you know, DC Marvel fan, in a uh, way. I'm uh, a geek that way. Uh -huh. So any one of those movies... Okay. I'm, All right. A, su a, a superhero movie of some sort. Yeah. A superhero movie. Yeah. Yeah. Okay. All right. Great. Um, next question. Uh, what pictures do you have on the wallpaper on your phone? On my phone. I think these are the default ones from Apple. I'm boring that way. <laughs> <laughs> yes. Yeah. <laughs> Nothing more, nothing special, nothing, nothing, you know, curious about that. Okay. All right. Great. All right. So, Sayed, last question. Um, so, you walk into a room, a lot of people are there, and there's music playing, and this is your theme song. What would that song be? Theme song. Theme uh, song. And yeah. Music playing. Yeah. I, I mean, I recently heard this song. I think that's used by one of the other brands as well. I think by. Uh, uh, I, I think uh, Rolling Stone. Yeah. I think she got many colors or something like that. She, uh, I, I, I am forgetting the lyrics. I'm really bad at that. Uh huh. But she, I, it is. She's a. I don't know if you can relate. She's, she's a ra rainbow. Yeah. She's a rainbow. Yeah. Yeah. yeah that, so it's a nice song. I'm not. Is. I'm not big of a song and dancer kind of a person. But yeah. Exactly. There you go. Uh huh. That's the one. So that's a really nice song, and I think that relates to our brand as well. Very, very definitely, yeah. That's yep. a great song, yeah. Yep. I love that song. So cool. I really like that song. I really fell in love with it, and I think it, it relates to our brand. I think so, too. All right, fantastic. Yep. Good song, good song. All right, great. Uh, is there anything else you want to throw out there before we uh, wrap this up? I, I just want all of your audience and subscriber to remain safe. Remain healthy, cherish your families, cherish the women around because they work much harder than men. They really care about their families and they want to make sure that the society overall is a better society. And in this difficult time, I know everybody has questions and everybody is, is concerned. Um, 
I would say this too shall pass. Yeah. And we all would be out of it. And we would be looking back at it as if, you know, something never happened. So keep optimism, stay optimistic, and always keep hope and faith. Yeah. That's very important. Cool. Great. Nice optimistic message. All right, Sayed, thank you so much for entering the dojo. It was great talking to you. And uh, I think uh, I think uh, my yeah. pr- predominantly male uh, listeners are going to have a whole new appreciation for women and, uh, and for your service. And hopefully uh, we're all that much more respectful. And uh, yeah, we just care for each other a little bit more than we have in the past. I appreciate it. Thank you so much, Jay, for, for giving me this opportunity to be part of your audience, to be part of your family here at the dojo. And uh, I love it. And I look forward to having more conversations about this as Great. we move forward. Yeah, definitely. Thank when you. Uh, when uh, yeah, when you break into San Francisco, that would be a, another good time to uh, to get an update from you oh, for yes. sure. Yeah, good. We'd love to. We'd love to. Thank Great. you so much. Okay. Thank you. You have a good, good evening. Bye. Loved this episode of the Rideshare Dojo podcast? Head over to iTunes to subscribe, rate, and leave a review. It really helps, and it's very much appreciated. Be sure to visit RideshareDojo.com to join the conversation, access the show notes, and discover our fantastic bonus content. Thanks for listening, and be safe out there.